Hey, it's Dave Wyman. Welcome into Football 101. Uh, this week I want to look at a, a running play. The defense did a really good job against Green Bay last weekend uh, against the run. They ended up holding the Green Bay Packers to 84 yards on the ground, which that would be number one in the NFL if you're able to do that for the entire year. But uh, Seahawks defense really, I mean, they're out on the field a long time. It, it was a tough day for them, but still only gave up 17 points. And one of the touchdowns came from inside uh, the, their own 10 yard line because of a fumble. So, but this is a particular play here. And I want to talk today about gap control, force, and then Richard Sherman. We're going to talk about him making a pretty bold claim here. I think he's the best tackling cornerback in NFL history. But first let's talk about gap control. This is how the Seahawks had lined up um, against the, the run and it's kind of a mess here but hopefully you can see it and here's how at least we used to look at uh, gaps and gap control and on every running play these guys know no matter what formation they know what gap they have and we don't know that and sometimes players do kind of you know different things and maybe it's based on game plan and things like that so let's look at what where I think that they had gap control here and uh, sometimes it's different they have different rules and things and how they play stuff but basically uh, you look at what gap everybody has based on the formation what happens here is this receiver ends up going in motion across the formation so the Seahawks end up bumping we call it uh, inside so Sherm ends up in here Bobby goes back this way and KJ over here but what's what ends up happening on this is uh, uh, Jaron Reed takes this guy head up and looks like he's controlling the backside A gap. Um, this is Sheldon Richardson. He takes the backside B gap. And then um, here comes Cliff Averill off the edge, and he's got either force or the C gap. We'll talk about force in a second. But uh, everybody has a gap. So, and on this side, because they went in motion, Sherm, I think they expected him to go all the way across the formation. And uh, if, if it's man-to-man -man defense, that, that sometimes Sherm will run all the way across. But in this case, he just bumped inside. Same thing with Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright. And so now they have uh, different assignments. So out here, I think Sherm would have been the, the force guy, which force means you're the guy who turns everything back inside, okay? And the reason why force is so uh, important in the NFL is because the hash marks are really close together in the NFL. They're about six yards apart, so the ball gets spotted inside there. Even if the ball goes down out here, it comes back to one of these hash marks. It's about 23 yards from the sidelines to the hash mark, so it's really important that nothing gets outside of you. So um, Sherm goes, I think, from being forced to inside and taking a gap. So the ball is snapped, handoff comes here, and so... Uh, Terrence Garvin ends up being the force guy. He comes uh, outside, he gets blocked here, and he is the guy that turns everything back inside. Same thing with Cliff Averill on this side. And so that's why it's so important that you have force so you turn it back. I remember being, <laughs> being a linebacker, you defeat a block, and the guy that has force sometimes would sniff inside and get hooked, and then the ball goes outside. Now, I remember thinking, gosh, just turn it back in. Turn it back in to where all these guys are. So that's a very important job force and Terrence Garvin does it on the front side. Um, this guy ends up coming off and I think what happened here with Green Bay, they didn't realize they were going to get, they were going to be outmanned over here because this tight end is blocking Garvin, um, this guard is blocking uh, Bennett and now there's one guy and that's a tackle to block two different players and uh, he's overmatched. But he made the right decision and what he did is he went up and blocked the linebacker because the linebacker is the bigger threat. And I think the reason why a lot of times people will go ahead and just not account for corners because corners usually don't tackle. They usually are guys that are cover guys and, uh, you know, they typically don't come up and, and play inside the box and what I call big boy football. <laughs> Sherm came in and I'll tell you what, he came up and made a really good form tackle on Ty Montgomery. And, it wasn't just, I think it was the best hit of the game. I mean, he got his head down and uh, his, uh, he had his, his face mask up, so he didn't put his, uh, he didn't put his, uh, no spearing or didn't put the crown of his helmet into the ball carrier. He got really low, he wrapped up, he ended up grabbing the back of his legs and then just drove his legs and, and it was probably like a two yard gain. So Richard Sherman did a really good job. But here's, you can see all the gap control here. These guys both were taking care of that gap, the C gap. Bennett here in the B gap. So it's all, if everybody does their job, 
it shouldn't go anywhere. And that's hard to do in the NFL because a lot of times somebody gets beat. But in this case, uh, Sherm comes in, makes this beautiful tackle. And yeah, so I think he's the best tackling corner in, in NFL history. And I know that there's a, a comment section underneath this. If you can think of somebody, I'll listen. But I know Kevin Ross was a bulldog type of uh, corner when I played. Played for the Kansas City Chiefs, number 31. Really tough guy. But I haven't seen a guy that's as willing of a hitter as Richard Sherman. And this allows the Seahawks to do a lot. Like a lot of times, uh, other defenses wouldn't have this available because they don't have corners that can tackle as well as Richard Sherman. So Sherman comes up and he gets up here in the C-gap, makes a really nice tackle. I say he's the best tackling corner in NFL history. We'll talk to you next week.